cyclone, typhoon, hurricane. All of these names are used around the world to describe the most powerful storm known to man. Hurricanes are unpredictable, but scientists have a thorough understanding of how hurricanes form and sustain their power. In the Atlantic Ocean, hurricane season peaks during the late summer months when tropical waters are the warmest. Hurricanes form from a cluster of thunderstorms that suck up the warm, moist air and move it high into Earth's atmosphere. The warm air is then converted into energy that powers the hurricane's circular winds. These winds spin around a low-pressure center called the eye, which can provide a 20 to 30 mile radius of eerie calm. Encircling it is the eye wall, a towering ring of clouds with some of the fastest wind speeds of the hurricane. Surrounding the eye wall are curved bands of clouds, the rain bands, often tens of miles wide, releasing sheets of rain and sometimes tornadoes. When a tropical storm's winds reach at least 74 miles per hour, it becomes a hurricane. The hurricane then receives a category ranking of 1 to 5 on the Saffir-Simpson scale, based on its wind speed and potential damage. But wind speed isn't always the most dangerous component when hurricanes come near land. It's storm surge. Storm surge is caused when winds from an approaching hurricane push water towards the shoreline up to 20 feet above sea level and can extend 100 miles. 90% of all hurricane deaths are the result of storm surge. While hurricanes can cause mass devastation, just like other natural disasters, they serve a higher purpose within the global ecosystem. Hurricanes help regulate our climate by moving heat energy from the equator to the poles, keeping the Earth's temperature stable. Over time, science has helped us to better understand hurricanes and predict their paths, saving lives through early warning systems and helping us build better infrastructure to protect our cities. The more we study these complex storms, the better we can prepare for them and minimize their impact on human lives. Greetings. This is a tropical cyclone update and a weather watch for the next seven days. And we do have a newly formed system, tropical cyclone Yasi. And tropical cyclone Anthony is bearing down on the Queensland coast. Okay, here is the latest weather radar from the Queensland region and we can see a fairly powerful storm that's about to uh, cross the coastline and it seems that the eye, um, which is moving more southward than predicted, it seems to be heading down towards the Bowen region in between Bowen and Air. So as we can see it is drawing a heck of a lot of moisture and there's significant winds in front of this tropical cyclone. So. Hopefully it doesn't strengthen up. Um, it does look quite dangerous right now. Looking at the Bureau of Meteorology's latest feed also, and we can see that the eye is um, actually weakening right now. It was a little bit tighter about two hours ago. But we can see the general area will be heading towards Bowen, it would seem. And it seems that the winds would be around about 130 kilometers an hour. So this will be uh, quite serious. Um, hopefully um, residents have been prepared for this likely storm. Okay, here is the latest track from the Bureau of Meteorology and they're giving us um, it weakening down to a category one and then moving into a tropical depression. So it's still going to be presenting a significant flooding risk in and around these regions. And it seems to be that the winds will be uh, much more stronger on the right hand side as the, um, the circulation of the cyclones will actually create a lot more um, weather damage on this side. Okay across to ex-tropical cyclone Bianca and its track. Um, good news that it's weakened into a low and will be significantly weakening itself due to the wind shear associated in and around the um, lower portions of Australia. So this is good news. There still be considerable amount of rainfall in these regions. 
Okay, we're looking at the Weather Underground's latest tracking of the newly formed tropical cyclone Yancey. And we can see this storm is quite large right now. It's um, probably the most strongest storm that I've seen. Now, I was mentioning in my previous warning video, and I will leave the link in the description for anyone interested in having a listen. I did mention a CME recorded on the 18th of January. Um, Maybe another tropical cyclone heading in the above reaches and we're seeing the signs of this now. Now these are the first tracks so these obviously can change but the size of the storm right now is perhaps uh, two and a half times as large as tropical cyclone Anthony so that just shows you that there is a very strong potential that this storm may become quite serious. It is expected according of these um, latest tracks to reach category one however it looks to me like this is more than likely going to be a category four at some stage during its cycle looking at the CIMS website and what we're looking at here is the um, early stages and it looks like that the actual formation occurred in between Fiji and Vanuatu um, and we can see its current position currently about 35 knots and it's going to be slowly increasing in strength and it's going to get to a very dangerous level of 100 knots and they're virtually telling us that it's going to be category 2 at this stage and we can just see just on the edges um, the Queensland coast so this looks to be quite serious and a potential uh, tropical cyclone for um, when making landfall Okay, we're looking at the latest satellite imagery and this is a good indication as to the size of both storms to compare and we can see Tropical Cyclone Anthony just about to hit the coast at category level 2 and there is the state of Queensland. Now this storm in behind Tropical Cyclone Yazi is absolutely huge and it seems to be growing and gathering strength and there is a lot of monsoonal um, energies um, and moisture that's being drawn in. So it is a little bit concerning as to the quickness of this storm and it is quite dangerous it is forming just around about the um, Vanuatu um, region so they may be feeling some effects of this and this is as I said it's uh, much much larger than uh, Bianca and Anthony and Bianca was quite large but this is just um, beyond imagination okay I'm gonna make another forecast for the next two weeks um, and we're looking at here a digital representation of Halo CMEs that were recorded from the Soho Lasco C2 instrument and this website's called Cactus and it's a fairly good tool for um, labeling and numbering uh, risk potential of CMEs. Now I associate CMEs specifically these type of Halo CMEs uh, with these wild weather storms, cyclonic storms so I feel that there is a strong likelihood of one or two more tropical cyclones in 10 to 14 days. And this current CME that we're looking at is the 24th of January CME that was recorded. And this was classified as a four. There is also another CME and this was recorded on the 28th of January. So we can see there's a significantly powerful um, CME However, there is a disturbance in behind, so I'm not sure if this second portion of the um, CME or the actual blast itself may actually um, disturb the initial Halo CME. Um, time will tell, but I do feel that there is a strong likelihood of one more very large tropical cyclone um, in about 10 days time, and this may be the second. Okay, the forecast for the next few weeks I'm expecting a very large uh, tropical cyclone to form, hopefully not too large and I'm a little bit concerned about the 6 degrees um, south latitude region so that would put the potential areas above in the Timor Sea region heading down towards Darwin and Broome and in two weeks time there may be a potential of another storm above the Solomon Sea region so slightly inside and above and heading downwards. So. Um, hopefully we don't get to see two more, but um, it's just the based on the CMEs, um, there is a potential that two more tropical cyclones may be headed our way.
Okay, here we are in the Cyclone Jason Mobile. Here's Trev, he's the driver. That's my brother. And we're just passing through Tolga Scrub, which is just outside of Athens, on our way to Mariba, first destination. As you can see, it's already raining. Jack shit wind. And people are already going nuts. And here we go, just outside of Mariba. And look what we got. Hardly any rain. Dry hole. Yes. And you can see a, a steady stream of traffic escaping from the cyclone. <laughs> Not like us. The Colonel. <laughs> and there's some crazy drivers in Mariba. No red rooster because it's sharp. Wankers? What are we supposed to eat? <laughs> Here we come, Mount Malloy. So we're roughly 30 minutes north of Mariba now. A small place. Coming in the Mount Carbine. Oh, so much action there. Here we are, Palmer River.
Not even close to the eye, by the way, because there's no pressure drop. It's a bit better.
Got my lips, that did. <laughs> Got my lips. <laughs> We should only get a couple of branches in that face. <laughs> there won't be big ones, bro. Right. There won't be big ones. Twelve hours and we've got no water. Yeah. There it is. Who are we down to? This will drop to about five foot. Yeah, you gotta make the most of it. 